Hey everybody, Jeppy here, and today we're going to be going over my top 5 list for the most versatile attacking operators in Rainbow Six Siege. So if you guys could do me a favor, drop a like, because it took me a long time to make this video. Gathering gameplay, recording the audio, editing, figuring out the list of what I'm going to do. So if you guys could drop a like and subscribe, that'd be awesome. And also, to save time, I took some clips from my stream, so that way... Um, because it did take me a long time to make the video, so that way I can gather gameplay from the stream, keep my stream viewers happy, and then also keep my YouTube viewers happy at the same time. So, sorry about the overlay, and you might see my face up in the top right corner, but I had some really good gameplay from the stream, so I want to make sure I put that in as well. And then also, I work at a children's hospital, so if you want it, if you're interested in joining one of my streams... The best way to do so is to follow me on Instagram, which I'll pop up on the screen right here, because I can't really have like a set schedule because I don't work like a like a nine to five where I could have like, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I could stream. So I, it's whenever I have time. So the best way to follow me and watch my streams is to follow me on Instagram. All right, with all that out of the way, let's start off with our list at number five. And number five is going to be Habana. So, Habana, man, she used to be an absolutely amazing... She's still good, but she used to be an absolutely amazing operator. The Type 89 has always had that, what is it, 20-round mag. And, you know, it's good damage. The recoil is a little unforgiving. The Bearing 9 used to be absolutely amazing. Ubisoft definitely wanted to make sure that the machine pistols, they shouldn't be outclassing the assault rifles, the primary weapons, which is what the Bearing 9 used to do. Havana used to have claymores as well. She now has stun grenades and a breaching charge. And the thing that makes Habana so versatile is that gun is good, but you have to be skilled with it. You can't really be pre-firing too much because say you left with maybe like eight bullets left to engage in the fight, that's not going to do you any good. And to compensate for that small mag, she also has the bearing nine to help out with that. And I actually have a really good clip of the bearing nine that, oh my God, I was so excited about. So stay tuned for that. The best thing with Habana is getting those hatches. Oregon, for example, you have three hatches. You have one in bar, one in storage room, and then one in kitchen. If you get all three of those hatches and the defenders are defending the arsenal room, you have a really good chance of winning that. And then say you have like a thermite or something to get dirt tunnel, you open up so many different opportunities. It's not just for hatches. You can also... People underestimate how big a Habana, like the ex Kairos a hole can make. Um, you could definitely put a good sized hole in the wall. I just think that Habana has a pretty decent fragging role. Of course, she's a hard breacher, but she's a little more versatile than thermite. I would say her fragging capability oh, is a little the better than the thermite. She's got the flashes. Oh. She got breaching charges for versatility. And the bearing nine helps out a lot too. So that's why Habana comes in at my number five. Coming in at number four is going to be my girl, Zofia. So Zofia, she used to be OP. And when I mean OP, like she used to be overpowered. So we'll just start off first with that lifeline used to have four concussion grenades. Four. And they exploded on impacts. They exploded in midair. So basically, it was like a projectile Ella mine. It didn't need to land on the ground first. It, it had four of them. And you could burn ADSs so quickly. She had the four concussion lifelines. She, I believe, had the two like grenade launcher blasts as well. Plus, her gun is... It's not the greatest. I would say it's average. The M762 is definitely average. Um, it's kind of forgiving for the recoil, you know, it's, I, I would say middle of the road fire rate, mobility, damage is pretty decent. I would say it's pretty average, yeah. And then if you do run out of ammo, that secondary weapon, the RG-15 is also a really good option as well. Sophia also brings breaching charges and claymores. I recommend the claymore because if you're going to do the versatility, you already have the grenade launcher aspect of the lifeline. The thing that makes Sophia so interesting, though, is that she's one of the only attacking operators that can pick herself up from the down but not out stage. You could kind of get a little bit of leeway with Finca. She can pick up others, but they have a very low amount of HP as well. Sophia gets brought up with one HP, one goo mine, and you're dead. But having that extra assault rifle, the extra, the extra callouts, the extra body, on the field helps out a ton as well so with the i would say average fragging capability a lot of versatility with that lifeline you can burn ads's you can push people out from corners you can also have the versatility of vertical play with the breaching charges and with the grenade launcher aspect of the lifeline that's the reason why i have Sophia coming in at number four number three coming on my list today is gonna be buck so i was torn between buck and sledge but I guess everyone could pretty much say that Buck definitely brings more to the table. Not only can he 
skeleton key out the floor but of course you could do the ceilings as well leading to some awesome lanes of sight that you can do uh, something i do every i try to do every round is when you're attacking chalet and they're defending the kitchen like living room area go buck in the big garage buck out the entire trophy floor and they have nowhere to jump in or they, the defenders have nowhere to defend in there anymore the big thing with buck that a lot of people struggle with is that c8 sfw assault rifle Holy crap. So that thing hits pretty good. It, it's got pretty decent damage. The capacity is 30. Fire rate's pretty good. But the biggest thing with this is, oh my god, that recoil. So of course you have the skeleton key, and that doesn't help with the recoil at all. You, I wish you, I wish Buck's gun could be on a different operator, but having like a foregrip on it would be awesome because then you could really see how much that gun can shine. So if you're pro league or if you're diamond or if you're like, you know, really good, you could control this gun's recoil, no problem. But if you're a pleb like me, oh my god, this gun's so hard to use sometimes. <laughs> like, like I, I swear my mouse, I have to like bring it down to the bottom of my desk just trying to stop that baby from kicking. Also, his marksman rifle isn't too bad as well. But the big thing with Buck that also is underappreciated is those grenades. So you could be like a normal player and just yeet grenades wherever you please, but when you get really get into strats and you start throwing them through drone holes and using them to clear out utility as well the grenades are really really good and say you have a Zofia on your team that could burn out the ADS's with a lifeline Buck could come in with his nades and really screw some people's day up. But of course, the main reason why people bring Buck is that versatility in the vertical play. You can really open up some floors and ceilings, and there's really no one who does it quite as good as Buck. So coming in at number two on your list is probably someone, if you're new to the game, or if you play ranked right now, someone you never see anymore, and that man is Jackal. Man, I really wish Jackal got more play. The thing with him is I love playing him. I love playing him. He's probably my top three favorite operators to use on offense, but I hate going up against him because of just how miserable it makes your roaming experience. And I'll be honest, he is the one of the most frustrating attacking operator to go up against, but I really do think that Jackal <laughs> has to be one of the most annoying operators to go up against. He's a two armor, two speed, and he brings that amazing gun of the C-73. That gun hits like a truck. The mobility is fantastic. Capacity, 30 rounds. Damage 46, man, that gun is so forgiving with your recoil. That gun is really good. Slap an ACOG on there, and you can kill roamers all day long. So with a fantastic gun like that, with the fragging capability, his gadget really does bring so much to the table. Even if you don't scan anybody, even if you don't scan anybody, you at least know that someone was there. You could be like, oh, they have a cat can. Uh, maybe he put a cat can trap over here. Maybe they have a cavy. Of course, when you scan people, it makes the defenders wish they never roamed and they just anchor because, I mean, you could really bully someone if you scan their footprints three times. And that's the main thing with Jackal is that scan goes off way too often. So I believe Ubisoft is working with the nerf for Jackal right now, and I believe it's in the technical test server right now. But as of right now, he's gonna be number two because of the fragging capability, the roaming hunt. He's even got the versatility of that shotgun. Man, that shotgun is really underutilized sometimes. And then on top of all that, he brings smoke grenades to help with the plant. So if Jackal stays alive, kills a couple roamers, or at least identifies where the roamers are, maybe he can scan them and the teammates get them. Um, when it comes time to plan, he could also be the one to throw smokes down. I don't know why you would ever go with the other handgun for Jackal. Always go with the shotgun. I wish I could play Jackal more often. I understand why he gets banned all the time. Whatever. It's unfortunate, but he is getting a nerf, so hopefully that makes it so where he's not being sidelined every single round anymore. So coming in at number one is going to be my girl Twitch. So Twitch... Twitch used to be, she's just an operator that used to be, I mean, she's god tier right now, but she used to be god god tier. Do you guys remember when that Twitch drone had one? Was it? it was 14, was it 14 tasers in one Twitch drone? Was that it? Or was it 11? I forget what the number was. You could literally kill people. You could, if they were bad enough, if they were bad enough, you could literally kill people with hitting them with that shock drone. The shock drone, let's just talk about the shock drone for now, then we'll head into the weapons of the loadout. That shock drone can get so much done. And I think what also boosts up Twitch right now even more is how often my show is being played. And you can single-handedly, with two tasers, take out a Maestro turret, one taser to disable it and open up the Maestro turret. You could either have a teammate shoot it to destroy it, but if there's no teammates around, you just want to get the job done. You could also send your second taser in, in the middle of the Maestro turret, to knock that out, that out as well. So you could potentially take out two Maestro turrets with one twist drone. 
You can also take out ADSs. You can even pop mirrors. You can, I mean, there's, I mean, literally everything. You can pop mirrors. You can destroy banded batteries. You can destroy caves. You can destroy elamines, goo mines, cap can traps. She could take out static cameras in the prep phase while the defenders are reinforcing so that when the defenders hop on their cameras and start around, they see, oh shit, we have four cameras destroyed. No, we, that really limits our information gathering. I mean, there's just so much with Twitch with that drone that you can do. You can even finish people. Say say someone calls out that an operator's down. You can yeet that Twitch drone across and find that person and shoot him before a defender gets to him. And man, there's just so much you could do with the drone. It's ridiculous. And then another really, really good aspect about Twitch is that F2. That F2 has to be one of, if not the best gun on the attacker's side. The RPM, get this, the fire rate is 980. The damage, 37. The damage is, is decent. But that fire rate is a headshot machine. It melts you, especially up close. The hip fire isn't too bad. Mobility is 50, the capacity is 30. So the capacity is yeah, average and mobility is pretty good. But it, the fire rate is absolutely amazing. The damage is spectacular too. And slap an ACOG on that baby and you, you're you going to town. There's very few guns that could compete with the F2. I would say like the R4C, maybe Jackal, C70. And then apparently Fuse's AK-12 was really good. I, I never play Fuse because you know, it's terrible. And then even if you wanted to get saucy and do some vertical play, she's got breaching charges. She's got flank denial with the gadgets. Like there's just, her pistols are not even that bad. You want to go with a revolver that has 78 damage? Go for it. If you want to use the P9 slap a suppressor on that so you're a little stealthy when you take out cameras if you need to, do it. There's just, I mean, there's just so much you could do with Twitch and it's not surprising that, I, I wouldn't be surprised if she gets a nerf soon because her pick rate and her win rate is pretty good. I like her a lot. So that's why I have Twitch at number one. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for watching and let me know what your guys' list. Do you agree with all my uh, picks? Just to go over again, we have Habana at five, Zofia at four, Buck at three, Jackal at two, and of course, the reigning supreme is Twitch at one. So let me know how yours went. Drop it in the comments. You can send me a message. Of course, follow me on Twitch. Subscribe to YouTube. Like the video. Follow me on Instagram if you want to know when I'm going live. And honestly, I'm having a lot of fun over there gaining some followers. So yeah, drop me one as well. And with that all being said, Jeppy out.